good, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Scott from the old Curiosity Shop, and I'm back in it. I've been snowed in it. Not really, it's mostly melted. In fact, it was pretty easy to get around even the next day, simply because snow removal is pretty quick here in the uh, Northeast. And I know it's not the same in all parts of the country, so to those of you dealing with ice and snow when you're not normally accustomed to it, uh, I hear you. It's kind of, how, uh, kind of how I am in the middle of the summertime when it stays up in the 90s too long. And uh, you know, you folks down in Texas say, oh, you know, that's a Christmas day, the 90s. Well, uh, I have some thrift haul items to show you today. And everything that I will show you, unless I tell you otherwise, is already listed right now in my eBay store. It's called the Old Curiosity Shop. And the link to it is always in the description box below. Now, if there's time, I'm having a sip. That's my Victor mug. Remember, they reproduce them in China. Be careful. There's a website that will uh, tell you how to tell the difference, and I think we've talked about that a few times before. Okay, um, let me start out with what I think is the most, oh, by the way, yes, I am wearing my sweatshirt inside out, and I know that, for those of you who like to keep track of those things, uh, I had just taken it, taken it out of the wash, spilled chicken noodle soup down the front, got mad, and turned it inside out. That's the way it goes today. Let me show you the first thing that I'm most excited about. This is one of the things I am so fortunate, blessed to be in this part of the country that is so rich with history. Uh, as you know, Philadelphia founded in the 1680s, something like that. I should have it memorized. And so, you know, we've got row houses from uh, the 18th century. Well, the other day I had to go to the post office on 9th Street here in Philadelphia and I was driving through and we don't have front yards, but people will sometimes put stuff out on the step and they'll say free or they'll have a sidewalk sale, you know, right in front of their house. They'll set up a little folding table and just get, get rid of stuff. I said, well, let me pull over and I did because I was driving, had the truck full, full of packages and here this lady had pulled this stuff out of uh, a 19th century row house. Yeah, that row house I probably estimate to be built sometime in the 1850s. And look what she just happened to have, you know, hiding behind a kitchen cabinet somewhere. A 19th century tollware, toll painted tea caddy or tea canister. I guess it's just a tea canister in amazing condition. Now, those of you who really know your antiques, 19th century antiques, you'll be able to really say 1840s, 50s, 60s, 70s. I'm not that good at it. I do know that it is 19th century. Um, I can tell by the painting, and I can also tell by the seam on the tin in the back. See the seam that we have here? You just tell by the way this is made. Um, yeah, at a yard sale, front, front stoop sale, right here in Philly. Now, there's always going to be some missing paint on these, but this is actually considered fantastic. Uh, not sure if it came from the Pennsylvania Dutch country, where it actually came from, but, you know, this is a Philadelphia piece, Pennsylvania piece. I think those might be tulips on there, you know, well, that might be a tulip, I'm not sure. Uh, so, lid comes off as it should. This is a bona fide antique. You see the seam on the inside? This is the real thing. I can't really smell tea. Uh, it smells like an old house. Um, and there's the seam on the back, which you expect to see. Great condition. Minor paint loss, paint loss on this. Terrific old finish. The lid is decorated as well, and it's just what you want to see um, on a piece of 19th century tollware. 
I couldn't, you know, it's like, hey, I gotta run to the grocery store and you run into something like this. But that's what happens living here on this, in this part of the country. So the measurements and everything, it's up for sale in the old Curiosity Shop right now. That is like one of the most exciting things. And I almost don't wanna get rid of it, but I'm in the business. I don't collect 19th century items unless it's something from the family. And so there it is up for sale. Somebody will love it. Made by Tiffin. And I think they made these in the 1930s. It's black satin glass. And some of you want to decorate at Halloween. You want to put old dead branches in there. Um, but you don't just have to use it at Halloween. Okay, it's got poppies on it. Almost in a meandering Art Nouveau style, as you can see. So we've got the raised poppies on this beautiful satin glass. It's not marked. They didn't mark these. They came in different sizes. And... Um, there were a few different sizes. Most of the time, when I see these anywhere, they're painted. Either some crafty person comes along or they're painted in a factory. So uh, you get the old chippy paint. <coughs> Excuse me. This one has never been painted. And that's the original surface. Now, no chips, no cracks, clean on the inside, clean on the out, but you will have to get yourself a washcloth and maybe a little, just be very careful. You are gonna need a little bit of an abrasive and I want you to be careful. Uh, either a barkeeper's friend or an Ajax, and I know some of you are gonna scream, but it's, you will not damage the glass. You just got to be careful and go very, very gently. If you want to remove, there are, let me see if I can find some. You all know, um, see right here, when, when satin glass or different types of glass um, touches aluminum like a sink or if it bangs up against something else in a cabinet, you'll get these, there we go, you'll get these little surface, you see, that's not, that's on the surface, that's not black scratched off, this is not painted, it is black satin glass, so all you're trying to do is get those little, and listen, if they don't bother you, there's another one right there. Somebody, you know, rubbed it up against something, um, and, and you can sort of sit there and just, just gently, uh, you know, don't be a bull in a china store, be gentle with it, and you can get those off if you care to do so. It's not that bad, but I wanna tell you that they're there. I know I'm gonna get all these comments. Oh, don't take Ajax to that. You've got to be gentle and you just, you just, you won't, you won't ruin it. You say, well, why don't you get it off? Well, I, I, I could, but sometimes I just don't have time. This is a great big, beautiful EAPG vase. I think it might be made by McKee. Um, I've got the EAPG. PG book over there, which is about that thick. And I could sit down tonight and flip through it and try to find the pattern. It's just a beautiful, tall, I think it's a 12 inch tall, EAPG sort of trumpet vase. You know, 1900, something like that, even a little earlier, 1890s. Beautiful condition, it's clean, it doesn't have water damage on the inside. There are no cracks. There is a chip which can be felt but not seen. You, you know, how do you even see a chip on something like this? You've got to run your... Okay, there it is. There's a chip right... It's so hard to get you to see it. It's, there's a chip right there. I mean, it's almost impossible to see it, but it's there. Okay, see, you can feel it, but do you see it? Not really. Um, Valentine's is coming. A couple of long stem roses in that. Actually, you won't get it by then. I just listed it today. Today's the second. Auction won't end until the ninth. Mm. Yeah, never mind. I can't get it to you by Valentine's Day, but, well, it was a nice thought. Salt and Pepper Shakers by Gemco. Stainless lids, they're just cute. You know, if you just want a little Gemco, 
Gives you the feel of the diner. Two fiberglass lampshades. Originals with clip-ons. I've got the measurements uh, on my eBay page. You can go and look. Thank goodness nobody burnt these with a 160 watt light bulb. We've all seen when that happens. Yes, they glow uh, under black light almost, almost all, not all, not all, but probably 90% of the green glass that you're going to buy from the 20s and 30s before the war is going to have some uranium in it. Not all of it, but again, most of it does. And these will glow. It's the cream and sugar in the, in the block optic pattern. They're very elegant. That's the cream and that's the sugar. You can collect the whole little luncheon set, cups and saucers and plates. Uh, yep, no chips, no cracks. And well, we might have time. I don't have a whole lot to show you today. We'll speed this up. You saw this if you look at my community page on the YouTube channel. Fenton, I guess, I always think of Fenton with these. A nice, uh, a nice big, uh, what am I trying to say, milk glass hurricane lamp, hand painted with flowers. A few little chips here and there, but you're gonna get that with the paint. So there's our shade, yeah. And the base socket all that stuff put a light bulb in it the cord is fine i forget the measurements but i did put them in the auction listing uh, the bottom does not light up only the top the aladdin lamp company was great for putting the dual sockets where you could have the top lit or the bottom lit or both you see that in a lot of their lamps but <clears throat> not this one you could wire it that way if you took it to a lamp person, they can take that out and do the top and the bottom socket. Okay, so that's, there are no chips or cracks on this either. And you can see it lit up if you'd like on the auction site. Ah! Okay, we're fine down there, don't worry about that. Uh, you saw this before and it is finally up and listed. Made in Japan in the 1930s uh, for the breakfast table. There's the little tray and the pitcher. Now, it's a little bit big as a creamer, and I've talked before about waffle sets where waffles were made at the breakfast table with the waffle iron. It was perfectly normal to do that, and it was a thing. And people had waffle parties. Uh, the jar that holds the batter has what's called a duck bill spout just look up waffle I should show you but um, so this wasn't meant to hold batter for waffles it does not have the duck bill spout on it could it have held syrup it certainly could have held syrup or milk or just anything that you want for your breakfast table but it, it's it's nice and large and it sits on this tray I think again my lights might be it's just all hand painted. I think there's a little crack in the in the tray here on the near the edge. Um, so there's the made in Japan mark on the bottom. That's a nice one. Oh, waffles was a, a big deal in the late 20s. It was a fad, and everybody had to have an electric waffle iron. There was even a song where it was called Waffles. And it came out in 1927, 28, something like that. Maybe, 19, I think 1928. Uh, it, was, it was a big deal, waffles.
like waffles. What else have I got? Oh. Um, all right, I'm selling it. Um, casting his net, I think we all agreed that that's what he's doing. Paint by numbers in the original frame. And I did some research on this. This is a picture craft. Uh, paint by numbers. And this, instead of cardboard or some type of backboard, when these kits were sent out, uh, they were sent out on roll, excuse me, I think I just burped. Did I just burp? Pardon me if I did. Um, you can see folded back here is the rolled canvas. And we can see the instructions here and you'll just barely be able to see picture craft. You're not gonna see it. Right up in there. And it says 1953. So the paint, so you, then you had to take this and sort of mount it on a piece of cardboard. Um, a very nice person wrote to me and gave me some history. I think the paint by numbers came out in 1949. This is old and early. Now it says here on the back, 15 years, something, something, and then 1953. I think the company started making these in 1953. So, I don't think this dates to 1953. It might date to this sometime in the 60s, but it's still on this rolled canvas rather than on card or on board. Um, it's in remarkable condition. It's very clean. It's unusual. And it can be yours. It can be. This thing. All right, you mid, you 1960s and 70s. This is listed too, and this says uh, the art specialty company of, oh, it's made in France by the art specialty company. Uh, gooseneck lamp there, light bulb not included, in good condition, works just fine. Yeah, okay, so. Uh, you can have that if you'd like. And then, uh, oh, I don't know. I suppose, I guess they're supposed to be Tibetan or maybe Burmese. We'll go with Tibet, but I'm not really sure. Um, anyway, it looks like something from the king and I. So Tibetan or Burmese, I'm not sure, but right out of that exotic period you know there was exotic interiors as you know uh sort of the mid 50s into the mid 60s here's a pair this is molded plastic you can see there was there was not there is no glass and there wasn't supposed to be glass made by the illinois molding company of chicago and it is a they're in good condition uh See, it's a, it's a type of a molded plastic. See? Original paint. The backs are original. And uh, whether I'd like you to see right here, which it never really comes into focus when I do this. But it says, Lit Brothers, $3.99 each. Lit Brothers Department Store is one, two, three, four blocks south and about four blocks east. I'm about 10 blocks away from Lit Brothers Department Store, which I have memories of as a child. And I think my mother told me that her father used to buy his suits there. And you could buy furniture. We have an old, there's an old chair that was my great grandfather's that's at my mother's house. And that has a Lit Brothers department store tag on the bottom. But that's where these came from. That doesn't really make a difference, but a little Philadelphia history. Okay, so those are really neat to have those, to have them survive that way. Now, uh, what I'm not selling is another little old radio that I just picked up. This is a nice little um, 1940s Emerson. And it's in a Bakelite case, cream colored. They did paint these different colors. That's the original paint on that one. Nice, 
sort of Art Deco dial there. This is a little one. Little tube set, five tube set. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, of course I have not gotten in there yet to fiddle around with it. But this is one that's probably going to date somewhere between 19th, um, this will be a late 30s or very early 40s set. So that is one thing that I like to collect and keep. And then, what I do not have listed yet, but I hope that you'll be excited about this. I hope so. It's already 20 minutes. I'm not going to talk about that stuff. I'm going to show you one more thing and then that's it. I am working on buttons. B-U-T-T-O-N-S. I got a truckload of them. Now, I dumped them out into bags. I don't have time to go picking through them and try to match them up. So I have two pound bags. I've got four two pound bags. That's eight pounds of buttons. That's a lot of buttons. Uh, and then there's another smaller bag. So uh, I'm gonna sell each bag individually. Now you're screaming, well, let's see it. Okay, well, all you're gonna get to see here is just sort of, ooh, that's a good one. Um, we run the gamut from 1900 into the 60s here. And what I'm gonna do for the photography is I'll take each bag of buttons and dump them out on the on a table and just sort of take as many pictures as I can you know to let you to give you an idea what's in the bag but basically you'll just have to be surprised because there's no way I can count all of these buttons uh, you know so it's two pounds hold on for a minute don't go anywhere I'm coming right back Get them all in here. Hold on. Let me just show you. I'm not going to show all of them. Here's another one. Just quickly. Here's another bag. I'll open them up, dump them out. I think most of these are going to be the 1930s and 40s. 20s, 30s, and 40s. But there are some older ones. So there's another big bag. Here's another big bag. All these bags I'm showing you now are different. Well, you crafters and you vintage clothing people, you're going to have a fit. This bag is filled with, with I've got there are a bunch of glass buttons in here. And uh, some of these are just, look, there's green glass. This is a smaller one. The other bags are all uh, three, uh, two pounds each. Okay, uh, that one sort of looks a little Art Deco. All right, so um, again, the buttons are not ready yet because I haven't done the photography. I need to dump all those buttons out and take some really good pictures of them and we'll get those up really soon. Um, okay, that's it. Thanks for joining me. Maybe in the next video, I'll talk to you about some of the things that I wanted to talk to you about, but we'll just say that's it for this one. I hope you're doing well. Enjoy your evening and thank you for watching. I'm Scott from the old curiosity shop. Wait for the cat. So long for now.